when we're frightened or what it happens when we're frightened or overwhelmed beyond our capacity to rebound. Hmm. I say that once more. It's about being frightened or overwhelmed beyond our capacity to rebound. And in a way, I define resilience as this capacity to rebound. That which when is thwarted is always there wanting and needing to come into completion, to execute yeah. and to come into completion. And that also became a very big part of my understanding of what happens in trauma and why trauma doesn't get resolved yeah. because we stay in that overwhelmed, thwarted condition. So how does unresolved trauma make us less resilient? more brittle or more rigid in our ways of coping, yeah. et cetera, et cetera? Well, basically trauma uses up our resilience, uses, uses up our capacity. Yeah. Uh, my doctoral dissertation was really just on that. It was called accumulated stress, reserve capacity, and dis-ease. So when we lose that reserve capacity, then we are more susceptible to dis ease and eventually to all kinds of diseases. How does trauma use up our reserve capacity? Well, we, this goes to our core uh, autonomic nervous system. The part of our nervous system that responds involuntarily to all kinds of physiological needs and to particularly to needs where we have to go between the normal homeostatic needs, so we, you know, we, if, if we need to go walk up a hill, our breathing increases. Uh, you know, when we're, uh, when we're breathing, our level of carbon dioxide de increases and decreases and so forth in a normal way. But when we experience threat, all of those delicate homeostatic adjustments are overwhelmed or overloaded, and we go into either fight or flight, that is to say, when there is perceived threat, sympathetic nervous system, or when we perceive life threat. And that's a shutdown state. So sympathetic state is to hyper arouse ourselves, exactly, to be ready to, to fight or to flee. And if it gets stuck there, then you have high heart rate and, and shallow high breathing, like with Nancy, yeah. just what I saw with Nancy. But the other one, Therapists are, and, and people are not, uh, do not understand that nearly as well. And that's when we're shut down. Yeah. And when we're in this shutdown state, that's when we really lose our capacity to rebound, where we really re lose our capacity for resilience. And so when we're able to free these autonomic states, like with Nancy, right, it didn't help her to be either in the hyper, hyper arousal state or in the shutdown state associated with her low heart rate and her feeling that she was dying, but that she was then able to be in this middle range of autonomic activity. That, to me, is the definition of core resilience. There are many other factors, you know, how we, beliefs that we have about ourselves and, 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 mm. and, and so forth, but I believe that the core is in this um, in this lack of autonomic resilience, autonomic responsivity.